Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to lecture 8 of SBR and today we are going to do IS 12 income taxes this is one of the very important lecture because this you are definitely going to get in the exam at least one question you are going to get on IS 12 okay so in this we have lots of calculations but this standard can also ask you questions to written questions as well okay and this is not at all complicated to understand but this can be complicated in your exam okay i will show you how but first let's go through the areas that we are going to focus on this lecture we are going to start with basic principles of tax you must have covered all most of this in your financial reporting so here it's going to be a little easier and we are going to go in the advanced level second is your current tax there are two types of tax when we talk about income tax one is current tax and the other one is deferred tax okay then we are going to study what is deferred tax liabilities and assets you need to identify whether it's an asset or a deferred tax a liability okay specific situations now this is the area where sbr is going to test most of your knowledge from that is your specific situations because this has not been asked in your financial reporting and then we are going to study through business combination and deferred tax for example in the group accounting for subsidiaries joint venture associates what is the impact of the deferred tax and disclosure how do you disclose this so let's start with basic principles of tax okay what is tax if i ask you this question what is tax in simple words tax is an expense okay so in your accounting you need to know how to record tax and there are two types of tax and both the type of tax needs to be dealt differently okay trust me if you understand this this is one of the easiest area to score marks deferred tax or a current tax anything they will just say tax because it is just known as income tax income tax includes both first we are going to study what is the current tax okay it is the amount that you have to pay to the tax authorities whatever the tax rate uh, at that time of the financial reporting year okay in the exam they will give you the rate okay the problem occurs when they give you two three rates and you have to decide what rate to apply next is deferred tax deferred means what forget about tax what is the meaning of deferred in english if i ask you deferred means you are delaying deferring in the future you have not paid yet you are going to pay in the future right so deferred tax means you didn't pay any tax it is just an accounting measure why do you do that to match the tax effect of transactions with the accounting treatment that means some event has occurred but the impact of the tax may be in the future it's not in the current period that's the reason we are doing this deferred tax okay it is not a tax that is levied by the government but it is just an application of accrual concept in summary if i have to conclude okay tax expense when you have to calculate tax expense in your exam it is current tax whatever your current tax is plus or minus moment in deferred tax because it can be an addition it can be deduction we'll see how the total is known as tax expense and that goes in your statement of financial position okay now how do you account for this current tax it is recognized in the financial statements by doing this you debit expense tax in the pnl account and you credit in your statement of financial position tax payable simple the problem comes in the deferred tax okay here accounting standard okay the principles that you apply in the accounting standard the way you calculate tax using accounting standard and the way the tax authorities uh, put tax according to their jurisdiction is different there's a difference between these two that's why we are having this deferred tax if there was no difference there's no deferred tax only current tax that means your accounting profit is different from your taxable profit okay you need to know there are two types of differences one is temporary that is short term the other one is not temporary okay our focus is on the temporary differences what are those temporary differences for example capital assets if you have bought any machinery or motor vehicles or anything okay it can be written down at different rates for tax purpose then they are in the financial statements 
the rates might be different that you give in the financial statements and what the tax authorities does next differences which are not temporary they are permanent for example fine okay if you are having any kind of fine that is that goes on as expense in the pnl statement of profit and loss okay they are normally disallowed by the tax authorities that means it will always be like that the difference will never go because it is never allowed by the tax authorities what do you mean by not allowed or disallowed by the tax authorities you this you have to understand very clearly because in the exam they might say some expenses disallowed by tax authorities disallowed by tax authorities if you don't understand the meaning of disallowed you might think don't include it no disallowed means whatever expenses has been deducted in the profit and loss now you have to add back it needs to be added back because they cannot be taken as an expense you cannot deduct it so you need to add back okay add back in the tax tax computation because they are never permitted as an expense by the tax authorities okay temporary differences we are focusing on temporary differences okay in the exam they might give you any type of differences if it is permanent you do not calculate deferred tax if it is temporary you calculate deferred tax okay temporary differences means profits that are there in the statement of financial position sorry in the financial statements okay profits are reported before they are taxable by the authorities you understanding there is a time difference between when the profit is taxable and when the profit is not taxable they are not taxed at the same time it's not the moment you receive profit and they will tax and you pay the tax to the tax authority no for the short time that difference is there that that's why it's known as temporary difference okay meaning tax is payable to the authorities even though profits have not been reported in the financial statements it could mean the other way also okay so according to the accrual concept and i'm assuming that you know what is accrual concept i don't have to teach you at this level okay this is a professional level i don't think i have to explain you what is accrual concept in case you forgot you can google it and check what is accrual concept okay the tax effect of a transaction okay should be reported in the same accounting period as the transaction itself see whatever the transaction because of that transaction that is causing the tax should be recorded in the same period the transaction and the tax effect that is the meaning of accrual concept that's why we are doing this because currently it is not recorded at the same time transaction is at some other time tax effect is on the some other time so they are trying to bring it together that's why we are applying the accrual concept that's why we are accounting for deferred tax on temporary difference okay what is temporary difference now difference between carrying amount of the asset or a liability it could be an asset or a liability anything they can give you anything you have to identify whether it's an asset or a liability they will not write sometimes that this is an asset or this is a liability don't expect spoon feeding okay don't expect everything they will clearly label no you have to understand so difference between asset or a liability the carrying amount and its tax base see everything will be given to you in the exam what is the carrying amount of the asset or liability will be given to you tax base you might have to calculate find the difference and get the temporary difference on that apply the tax rate and get the deferred tax okay what is tax base what is tax base money sorry the amount that is attributed to an asset or a liability for tax purpose they will mention all these things in the exam you don't have to worry you only have to know how to calculate temporary difference the formula remember this formula is not then the formula sheet you have to remember it how do you remember it the best way is do as much questions as possible do as many questions as possible from your revision kit there are so many questions on deferred tax okay so now we are moving on to the examples of temporary difference but before we move on to this examples of temporary difference let's do a question on our current tax so this is the first question under your income tax we are going to do a without recognizing deferred tax b with recognizing deferred tax what is the impact okay so compute the pre and the post tax profit for prudent for each of the four years ending to 
31st December 2000 to 2003. Inclusive, inclusive means 2000 will be included, 2003 will be included. Sometimes they might write exclusive. Exclusive means do not include. Inclusive means include. Okay. But first, uh, let us read the question. Prudent prepares financial statements to 31st December each year. Okay. On 1st of Jan, they purchased a non-current asset for 1.6 million and useful life is 4 years. This asset has an immediate tax relief for 100% of the cost of the asset. Immediate. Immediate means first year. For the year ending 31st December 2000, the draft showed a profit before tax of 2 million. Okay. They anticipated that this level will be maintained. Tax is at 30%. Apart from the differences caused by the purchase of non-current, there are no other differences between accounting and taxable. So you know there is only one difference. That is because of the non-current asset. Now we are going to do in the normal way before recognizing deferred tax. How do you do that? And remember this question you have to do it in Excel because it will save a lot of time. Okay, so first we are going to do A. Okay. What is your starting point? How do you start this question? Remember, you have been given the profit before tax 2 million. Okay, I will highlight it for you. Right. 2 million, but this 2 million is your accounting profit. First, always you have to convert accounting to taxable profit because without taxable profit, you cannot calculate tax. Tax is always calculated on taxable profit, not accounting profit. I will write it down for you. Whenever you get a question like this, your starting point is start calculating taxable profit. How do you do that? Start with accounting profit. So first step is accounting profit. But before that also, remember this is for four years. So first we are going to make column 2002, sorry, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003 and the total. Okay, and this will be for the description. So first you start with accounting profit. What is the accounting profit? It is 2 million for all the four years. Okay, I'm going to write drop down the three zeros and write it in thousands. So 2000. 2000, 2000, and 2000, and the total will be 8000. Now, what's next? Adjustment. Any adjustment? What is the adjustment? Non current asset. But non current asset, we cannot do anything in the statement of profit and loss. What is it? Depreciation. Depreciation, because we calculate depreciation on non current asset, that depreciation goes into profit and loss. That's an expense. Add back the expense. So add back depreciation. But do you have the depreciation with you? No, you have to calculate. You have to calculate. How do you calculate depreciation? See what is the cost? Cost is 1.6 and they told useful life is 4 years. So just 1.6 divided by 4 which is 400. 400,000 or 0 0.4 million. So 400. 400 for all the four years because it's on straight line basis. Now, deduct capital allowance. You must be having some capital allowance also. Deduct it. Okay, what is the capital allowance? Remember, you have immediate capital allowance. Immediate means 
only in the first year so nil 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 for the other three years how much 100% of the cost of the asset 100% of the cost of the asset what is the cost of the asset 1.6 million so 1.6 million is the capital allowance for the first year okay deducted in the total deducted now what is the total in excel when you are doing it you can easily get this by some function okay but here you might need to use calculator so this is and this is known as taxable profit okay 800 2400 2400 and 2400 and it will be 8000 now tax remember this is current tax okay so write current tax at 30 percent whether it is deferred or current tax both are 30 percent so 30 percent of 800 is 240 720 720 720 okay 2400 if you add it like this you should get 2400 if you take 30 percent of 8000 still you have to you should get 2400 that means you have to get both the ways if you add downwards and across 2400 okay now this is not over your job is to get profit after tax what do you do What do you do? Again, do the same thing. Profit before tax. P, V, T, and deduct your current tax. I will extend the line. Okay, what is profit before tax? Simply your accounting profit only. Profit before tax is your accounting profit only, AP. So I'm just going to write it. 2000 2000 2000 and deduct your tax which you have just calculated all this will go down 240 720 720 720 and 2400 now what you get is known as profit after tax p a t 1760 1280 and 5600 so if you ignore deferred tax what can you see if you see the profits are declining can you see first year it was 1760 then 1280 for all the other three years before taking deferred tax okay Why is this profit declining? Tell me. Because in 2000, if you see, okay, some of the accounting profit escape the tax. Escape the tax means not entirely, it just got postponed in the future. That means it postponed to 2001, 2002, 2003. That's why your tax, uh, tax increased and your profit went down. When the taxable profit was more than your accounting profit. Understanding? That's what's happening. So now we are going to do with the deferred tax. Okay? Because if you want to take a decision just based on this, you will not be able to take a good decision. Now we'll take deferred tax. We'll see how the situation changed with deferred tax. Okay? I'm just going to extend the line. So in the deferred tax, we told deferred tax means carrying amount minus tax base. Okay. What is the carrying amount of the asset? Tell me. See, when you are taking the carrying amount of the asset, okay, you are just taking the asset value and deduct the depreciation. The value of the asset was 1.6 million. Depreciation is 0.4 million. So 1.6 minus 0.4, 1.2 million. 
amount okay 1200 this is the carrying amount second year okay another 400 is deducted from this 1.2 million it became 800 third year 800 minus 400 400 and the last year fourth year it will be zero or you can write nil tax base did not change otherwise they would have written for the tax base different rates so it's zero 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 okay now temporary difference this is known as temporary difference so this there will be no difference because tax base is zero okay temporary difference is only the carrying amount okay now apply 30 percent on temporary difference okay that means 30 percent on 1200 360 240 120 and zero okay this is the closing now we are going to see the opening deferred tax liability what is opening deferred tax liability that means your current tax that also you have to take into account because that is the total tax expense okay obviously for the first year there will be zero okay no opening balance then remember when once you want to find the opening this closing balance becomes the opening balance here you understand so 360 then this 240 will come here as the opening balance 240 then this 120 will come here 120 okay now so this goes to pnl as a tax expense 360 minus 0 360 240 minus 360 it will be a negative 120 then 120 then 120 okay this is not it we have to find the same way how we have done for current tax without taking deferred tax okay we are going to do this profit before tax from there deduct current tax and deduct your deferred tax okay profit before tax will be same 2 million okay current tax we have just got it you have to go in a and c 240, 720 and deferred tax we have just got 360 okay one twenty one twenty one twenty and nil here why see in this case this positive will be deducted here okay because this is positive 360 anyway you have to deduct deferred tax so it's, that's why it's minus 360 but here why it is positive and here it's negative because this one you are deducting negative that means you are deducting negative 120 minus minus 120 that's why it becomes positive here also is positive here also is positive okay and when you take off oh, add up all this minus 360 plus 120 plus 120 plus 120 it's, it's zero it cancels off each other you see so now profit after tax just deduct current tax and deferred tax from profit before tax and see 1400 1400 1400 1400 1, hence 5600 see it's equal now this is what deferred tax does this gives a more meaningful performance profit rather than saying the profit is declining in the other three years because some of the profit might have skipped tax in the first year that's why the profits are lower in the other three years because it got delayed but here because you have taken deferred tax every year it is now leveled out the profit is same all the four years and this is 5600 even here also you will see in A it is 5600 but here it is not labeled 
it profit kept going down because deferred tax was not taken into account so you see deferred tax gives a more meaningful understanding to your profit figure now we are going to go through the examples of temporary difference you should know what are the examples of temporary difference so in your exam if you get from that list it's a temporary difference otherwise it's not okay that's how you decide so let's go through the list now examples of temporary differences so let's now go through this list okay tax deductions for the cost of non current asset have a different pattern to the write off of asset in the financial statements okay so in the exam if they give you the depreciation okay or capital allowances that is uh, for the non current asset a temporary differences will come okay second intra group profit if intra group profit is there on the inventory it's a temporary differences why because there will be difference in the tax base and the carrying amount see temporary difference example means your carrying amount should be different to your tax base anything that causes the difference is the temporary difference so this is that list okay this you should know okay so in your exams not in your exams sorry when you are practicing from your revision kit look for different different examples what are the types of temporary differences that you got are you able to handle it okay because in your exam you can get anything out of this list you cannot predict that is always tax deduction or always non current as it always intra group profit no it could be anything it could be two or three also sometimes two or three differences also they might give you which usually they don't give but we never know so intra group profit in inventory that means when your parent is selling to subsidiary subsidiary is selling to parent that's an intra group okay so intra group profits what do we do we eliminate on the consolidation right but they are taxable in the competition of the group okay that's where differences is there third losses if you are having any loss okay but the related tax relief that you are going to get from loss because see when you are making loss you do not pay tax it's a tax relief you are saving tax right but this tax relief is only available by carrying forward against the future taxable profit okay you should be able to carry the losses and net it off against the future taxable profit to get the tax relief assets are revalued remember when assets are revalued it does not have any impact in the tax base so tax base does not have an impact but yes your carrying amount might go up development cost if development cost are capitalized and amortized to profit and loss okay but they were deducted for tax purpose as incurred for tax purpose they are deducted the cost of granting share options don't worry we are going to go in detail in each of this okay especially share options then losses then intra group profit you are going to go through those later in this lecture cost of granting share option when once you grant the share option it is recognized as an expense in the profit and loss okay but tax deduction is not obtained that time tax or, or, or deduction is obtained when the options are exercised and options will be exercised in the future let's say in 2 or 3 years okay so that time temporary differences will come now how do you calculate this temporary differences tax base of an asset and tax base of a liability you should know the difference if it's a asset okay tax base of an asset is the amount that will be you don't have to memorize the definitions okay you just need to understand for your calculation purpose that's why this is there so tax base of an asset is the amount that will be deductible for tax purpose against any economic benefits okay if economic benefits will not be taxable remember your tax base is equal to your carrying amount okay if there is nothing to deduct tax base will be same as your carrying amount that means there will be no deferred tax if both are equal if you deduct both it will be zero so no deferred tax tax base of a liability is is carrying amount less any amount that will be deductible for tax purpose 
okay so in the case of revenue which is received in advance the tax base of the liability is its carrying amount less any amount of the revenue that will not be taxable in the future period if you are not understanding this leave it for time being when we go to do calculation we'll show you this through a question now looking at the difference between carrying amount and the tax base of an asset or a liability you can say okay if your tax base is more than carrying amount sorry if your carrying amount is more than tax base it's a deferred tax liability the difference is known as taxable temporary difference i've highlighted for you you can see the word taxable and liability when the carrying amount is more than tax base okay second situation is when is the other way around carrying amount is less than tax base then it is known as deductible temporary difference and it gives to it gives rise to deferred tax asset okay so taxable goes for liability deductible goes for asset you need to memorize this too you have to know it and in your exam anything can come maybe it deferred tax liability maybe deferred tax asset maybe both calculation or written anything can come most of the time when calculation comes also a written a discussion question comes along with it so you have to be prepared for both now we are going to do a question on to identify whether it's a deferred tax liability or a deferred tax asset because identification of deferred tax asset or liability is the key to pass this area if there you are wrong you will be wrong throughout okay so let's do a question on that so here you have been given number of scenarios and you have to calculate the carrying amount the tax base and the temporary difference now this type of question you are definitely not going to get in sbr this is just your uh, just for you to understand whether you have understood the concept or not it is only for that purpose so first one tell me meshing cost okay this are assets they have already made your work easier these are assets because it's a machine so machine cost is 100 depreciation is 18 and tax allowance is 30000 now tell me what will be the carrying amount carrying amount is simply your machine cost minus depreciation 100 minus 18 which is 82000 this is your carrying amount when it's a tax base it will be 100 minus the capital allowance 30 so which will be 70000 You see, there's a difference. So, 82 minus 70, it is 12,000. It's a positive figure. Tell me, okay, whether it is a taxable temporary difference or a deductible. Taxable, taxable. It's a positive figure, no? It's always the carrying amount first. Carrying amount minus tax base. Okay. Next. interest receivable even interest receivable is an asset so interest receivable in the statement of financial position is 1000 interest will be tax when received so carrying amount is what 1000 because accrual concept tax base see they told interest will be taxed when received that means is a cash base on cash basis it will be taxed you still didn't receive this 1000 you are going to receive it so when you receive it it will be taxed now it is not taxed so tax base will be nil or zero so temporary difference will be 1000 this also will be taxable because it's a positive figure third is receivable so trade receivable have a carrying amount of 10000 but revenue has already been included in taxable profit so carrying amount is what 10000 What is the tax base? Tax base, hmm, ten thousand. Because they told this has been included in the taxable profit. That means on this only you are going to pay tax, ten thousand. Okay. So this is the accounting profit also carrying amount, also taxable profit here the tax base. So ten thousand, ten thousand, it's nil. There is no deferred tax. then inventory has been written down by 500 to 4500 the reduction is ignored for the tax purpose until the inventory is sold so ignored means okay 
see inventory has been written down by 500 to 4500 so carrying amount is normally 4500 what is the tax base remember they told okay inventory has been written down by 500 to 4500 please understand that means the actual amount was 5000 from here they reduced 500 that's how it went down to 4500 okay so tax base will be 5000 only because they do not care about this reduction they ignore this reduction by 500 so 5000 is the tax base so 4500 minus 5000 this time it's a negative 500 so because it is negative this is deductible deductible temporary difference not taxable it's a deferred tax asset you can say okay the rest three were deferred tax liability we have more so this liability what is written here an asset it's not deferred tax asset or liability it is the term the item that is a liability or an asset okay please understand current liabilities included accrued expenses of thousand this is deductible tax on a cash paid basis so when it's on a cash paid basis remember it's nil okay accrual it will be thousand it will be negative because it's a liability so here it will be negative thousand then accrued expenses also have a carrying on of thousand and this related expenses has been deducted for tax purpose so both you are taking five thousand and the difference will be nil okay so now do you understand so now we are moving towards deferred tax liabilities and assets how do you recognize and how do you measure them okay so first as recognition when do you recognize it is 12 says deferred tax should be recognized for all taxable temporary difference unless there are exceptions where you should not recognize deferred tax what are those situations unless the deferred tax liability first we are going to go through deferred tax liability exceptions then deferred tax asset why because deferred tax asset is more strict we have one additional rule there that's why so unless deferred tax liability arises from two things number one goodwill goodwill for which amortization is not tax deductible if it is so do not deferred tax is not calculated second scenario is where the recognition initial rec when you initially recognize an item it does not affect accounting profit nor it affects your taxable profit and which does not result from a business combination not because of some uh, acquiring subsidiary joint venture or associate no then you do not recognize deferred tax liability under these two conditions we're definitely going to do a question to understand it better now coming to deferred tax asset okay deferred tax asset should be recognized for all deductible temporary difference unless this also has situations where you should not recognize number one both the two exceptions that applies for deferred tax liability applies for deferred tax asset also additional is for deferred tax asset and the second one is more important from your point of exam because second second point often comes in your exam and i've seen it in the past paper okay that is when you're having tax losses or you can say insufficient taxable profit okay so insufficient taxable profit are expected to be available in the future against which losses or against which taxable sorry deductible temporary difference can be utilized to recognize deductible temporary difference remember you should be able to utilize your loss against taxable profit that means let's say today 2022 you are having loss in 2023 or 2024 in the future you should be able to have taxable profit through which you can utilize your losses if you do not have let's say this year you're having loss next year you're having loss third year you're having loss you're having losses continuously you cannot recognize deductible temporary difference you cannot recognize the deferred tax asset under that condition you should have a profit in the future if you're having only up to that extent through which you can utilize your losses against your future taxable profit you can recognize your deferred tax asset otherwise no now we are going to do a question a small uh, question on recognition how do you recognize deferred tax asset or a liability before we go to the measurement so here we are going to go through an example of recognition exemption okay on the reporting date a company purchased a factory for 1 million 
and recognize this and in the jurisdiction the building is not deductible for tax tax rate is 20 percent carrying amount is 1 million tax base is nil okay because no tax deductions are permitted taxable temporary difference is 1 million despite the fact that factory building will generate taxable income of at least 1 million they are okay otherwise the assets carrying amount is overstated and thus a tax charge of this one over this useful life no deferred tax liability is recognized now this is because temporary difference arises from initial recognition of an item okay that has not affected accounting profit or taxable profit why because the asset is unrecognized for tax purpose the asset was capitalized so it does not even affect accounting profit also if it was not capitalized if it was taken as an expense only it will affect accounting profit otherwise how can it affect accounting profit it will not go in the profit and loss account no so because asset is capitalized it will not go to accounting profit because it was unrecognized for tax purpose it will not affect taxable profit also okay so this initial recognition of an item does not affect both okay so the logic behind this exemption so that's why you cannot recognize a temporary difference will not occur you it is exempted what is the logic behind this the recognition would not provide useful information if you recognize it it will not give a useful information why you can credit deferred tax liability where are you going to debit where are you going to debit every accounting entry needs a debit and credit no that's why it's known as double entry credit okay deferred tax liability you recognize it and put what about the debit you cannot post the debit to PL or OCI because transaction did not affect any of this. So to date, the transaction has been recorded in PPE, but debiting PPE will further 0.2 million. That means it will increase 0.2 million more. And it will make little sense because your profit, property plan and equipment did not increase by 0.2. So because of this, recognizing this will reduce the understandability of the financial statements now do you understand why you do not recognize because conceptual framework always remember what does conceptual framework says about recognition to recognize it has to be understandable if it is not do not recognize okay just go through this again okay So now let us go to the measurement. So now we are moving towards measurement of deferred tax liability or an asset. Okay. Tax rate. Okay. The tax rate in force, whatever the tax rate that time or expected to be in the force when the asset is realized or the liability is settled should be applied for the to the temporary difference. Okay. That means to calculate tax, whatever the tax rate is there at that time in the force for asset or a liability you put that tax rate and that's how you calculate deferred tax balance also so is 12 specifies that this rate must be based on legislation enacted or substantial substantively enacted by the reporting date by the reporting date it should come it should be enacted remember deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability are never discount to present value you might say because they are in the future you have to pay why not find the present value no don't discount it is because it is very complicated to do that you never know the timing of deferred tax asset sometimes you might not recognize deferred tax asset or all so there's no point of finding the present value that's the reason next the entry to the profit or profit or loss or oci regarding deferred tax okay is the difference between the liability or the asset at the beginning and at the end of the year Okay, it is important to know the two things. Number one, if an item gives rise to deferred tax, it is dealt in the profit and loss. Okay, if any item that gives rise to deferred tax is dealt with in the profit and loss, remember the related deferred tax also will go in the profit and loss. If it goes through OCI, whatever the related item that gives rise to deferred tax, see where the item goes. If the item is recognized in OCI, the related tax to that item also will go in the OCI. So profit and loss for profit and loss, OCI for OCI. Just remember this. Now, how do you present? 
presentation of deferred tax assessment liability there are three things we went through number one recognition number two measurement number three presentation recognition and measurement we finished now third thing is presentation how do you present deferred tax asset and liability they are presented as non-current on the statement of financial position non-current because they are just not for one month sorry one year it can extend over the number of years that's why deferred tax asset or a liability are presented as non-current okay is 12 says further things about it that this deferred tax asset and liability can only be offset under two scenario condition number one remember this also had come in the exam previously i don't know which year but it came whether can you offset or you can't so you have to remember these two points that time number one if the entity has a legally enforceable right to offset the current assets against current tax liability yes you can otherwise no second the deferred tax asset and liability okay relates to the tax that is levied by the same tax authority if it is by different tax authority you cannot net them off against each other now let's do a question on this before we move on to the specific situations test your understanding two is uh, from your test your understanding one you have to go and calculate deferred tax okay assuming tax rate is 30 percent so that i assume you can do it on your own please go and do it on your own and check the answer behind i'm going to do test your understanding three okay so here you have to explain which read and this question is very and um, it's like an exam standard question you can expect this type of questions okay explain which tax rate should have been used to calculate the deferred tax liability in inclusion for the financial statements for the year under 30th april 2004 date is very important tax rate is very important okay in your exam you might be given two three different tax rates you have to be smart enough to choose the correct rate even if you have choose the wrong rate okay at least justify why you have taken that rate you should be able to do that so first let's read Brick is a company with a reporting rate of 30th April 2004. Company obtains tax relief for research and development on a cash paid basis. Recognition of a material development asset during the year in accordance with IS 38 created a significant taxable temporary differences. Tax rate for the company's as a reporting period was 22%. On 6th June 2004, government passed legislation to lower the company rate to 20% from this date onwards. Now tell me which rate to use 20% or 22%? Tell me. Most of you, most of you will be able to correctly pick up the correct rate saying is 22% is the correct rate and they should not use 20, 20% at this date, as a this date. Very good. But that's not enough to pass SBR, knowing the correct rate. Because what are you going to write then? For Let's say this question is for five or six marks. What are you going to write? That is 22% because there's a current rate and because it falls in that period, no, it's not enough to pass. You cannot write it. You have to use your knowledge of IS 12 to write this answer. At least three to four paragraphs you have to write for this. So how do you begin and how do you do that? You have to first start defining, okay, from IS 12 that when you should recognize a differ or how do you measure deferred tax liability and asset? This is about measurement actually. You have to understand which area has been tested. This is measurement. This is not presentation. This is not recognition measurement okay so measurement says okay i'm just reading i'm not reading anasa i'm just giving you some points to write on okay so deferred tax liability in asset should be measured using the tax rate expected to apply when the asset is realized okay and the tax rate that is used should be enacted or substantially enacted by the end of the reporting period it should always already have been in the law enacted by then so that is the first paragraph from your textbook knowledge you can write it first paragraph okay that i'm not writing here i have already told you the answer in the second paragraph what are you going to do you should tell the government enacted this 20 percent tax rate after the reporting period or after the period end therefore they should not be used when calculating deferred tax liability for the year ended this 30th april 2004 
but that rather the current 22 percent rate should be used instead so you have to write now you see you are using the terms of is 12 to answer this question third paragraph because this is after this one in third paragraph to reach to third paragraph most of you will not be able to answer this there is a hidden standard under this which is it which standard it is your previous standard which i have covered it in the previous lecture if you have watched didn't watch my previous lecture please go and watch it you need it for this the hidden standard see sometimes under a major big standard big standards are easy to understand from the word income tax or the tax rate you will be easily able to identify question is on is 12 but sometimes even under that there may be small small standards let's say provision which is is 37 or intangible asset anything in this case it is is 10 very few of you are able to understand this okay and remember the few who are able to identify this are those few who are the passing candidate they are the passing candidate okay this is from experience i'm telling you okay i'm not saying that if you are not able to identify you're going to fail as we are no there is no way i'm telling it but that's for sure that if you are able to identify hidden standards under the big standards you are definitely in the passing uh, range you are above 50 you are in that the other side of the, this thing you understanding because it's not easy these are very tricky it's not easy you need practice to identify and it nowhere nothing has been mentioned but the words like after the reporting period after the reporting period this word is hinting you that this is is 10 is included here so you have to tell according to is 10 also what you have to do once is 12 is over first deal with the big standards major standards the main ones is is 12 finished now handle the small standard this is how you answer or tackle any sbr questions now talk about is 10 what does is 10 says first of all what is is 10 about after even events after the reporting period right so according to that what is happening tax rate is changing so changes in the tax rate after the end of the reporting period are non-adjusting event you have to include i have told you only two things you have to do according to is 10 is very easy you just have to identify whether something if something is changing after the period year end whether it's a non-adjusting event or an adjusting event if it's an adjusting event very easy go and adjust if it's a non-adjusting event what do you do and in this case it's adjusting or non-adjusting tell it is not adjusting even but just because i am telling you the answer says don't tell me tell me from your logic why it is not adjusting because because at the year end you have no evidence that what will be the tax rate in the next it is something totally to do with the government government can anytime announce after the reporting period before that before 30th april 2004 there was no evidence as such the tax rate is going to change no okay why because government passed this legislation on 6th june 2004 on 6th june that is after 30th april this legislation was passed and this is going to be enacted from next year onwards 1st of jan 2005 so there is no clue as a 30th april 2004 that government is going to change government is going to lower the tax rate so that's why it's a non-adjusting event even though you don't have to write the logic but i am ex still explaining on the logic because some of you might struggle to identify that thing adjusting non-adjusting adjusting non-adjusting okay but remember when you said non-adjusting there are two things that you can do when it's adjusting it's very easy go and adjust nothing to worry but if it's not adjusting you have to worry more even though it looks easy why two things to do number one whether it is material or not if it is material that means affecting going concern anything material will affect your going concern assumption if it is adjust adjust if no disclose if you want to know the full lecture it is given in my previous lecture please go and watch my previous lecture okay in the end of this video uh, the this thing is there the link is there to go to my previous lecture okay or you can go through my playlist also the on the above you will see there's an i button click there you will get my playlist it is ordered in the number like starting with is1 so you will get is10 there okay so now changes in the tax rate is deemed to be material okay 
then BRICS should disclose this rate change and an estimate of the financial impact. Okay, sorry, it's not about material or not. If it is go affecting going concern, affects going concern assumption. Or not. If it affects it, just not. Here it is, it does not affect your going concern assumption. So you just disclose. You just disclose this rate change and what do you disclose? You disclose two things. Number one, number two. Estimate of the financial impact of that change in tax rate. Number one. What is number one? The nature of the change. How significant it is. Right? All those things. So you do the second thing according to this case because it's not so... It will not affect your going concern assumption, this change in tax rate. In fact, tax rate is lower means it's more good. You are not having any going concern assumption issues. So you are going to go by this second criteria. You are, it's not non-adjusting even and you are going to disclose non-adjust. Okay. So this is how you write your answer. Now we are going to touch on the specific situations. Under specific situations, we have more than one. Like three, four situations we have and how to deal with your deferred tax asset and liability. So let's do that. So the first specific situation is revaluation. Okay. For revaluation, deferred tax is recognized on the revaluation of property, plant, and equipment, even if there is no intention to sell the asset or any tax due on the gain made by made on any sale of the asset can be deferred by using roll over against the cost of a replacement asset. Right? If you're not understanding this, don't worry. Two questions will understand this better. Okay, especially the second point. This is regarding capital gain tax. Okay, we all know that when we sell an asset, there's a capital gain tax on that. Okay, so if there is any tax that is due on that gain, okay, that tax can be deferred using roll over against the cost of a replacement asset. You can deduct that cost against an asset if you're buying an asset. Okay, then any revaluation gain okay revaluation gains are recorded where they are recorded under other comprehensive income so any deferred tax from the revaluation gain will also go under other comprehensive income because earlier we have told anything that goes under other comprehensive income an item deferred tax also will go there if it goes in pnl deferred tax also will go in pnl that's how it works now we are going to do a question on revaluation before we go to the next specific situation so the pattern will be I'll be explaining you one situation and then we'll be doing one question, another situation and a question like that so that you can better understand the concept. So let's do a question on revaluation. Test your understanding for. So here we are going to do a question on revaluation. An entity Dodge owns property planning equipment at a cost of 100,000 when purchased. Depreciation is 40,000. An entity has claimed tax total tax allowance of 50,000 and 31st March the asset is revalued to 90,000. Okay, see when it says revalued, remember it could be revalued down or revalued up. Okay, and the tax rate is 30%. Now explain the deferred tax implications of this situation. In SBR, you can also expect questions to explain, not just calculate. So look whether they are saying calculate or explain. Even if it is explanation, you have to calculate something. You have to calculate the deferred tax. Okay, so how are you going to approach this question? First, start calculating the carrying amount and the tax base. So you start with the carrying amount. So let's do that. What is the carrying amount? It is simply the cost minus depreciation. So the cost is 100, depreciation is 40. Okay, so 100,000 minus 40,000, which is 60,000. Okay, so 60,000 is the carrying amount. Now we'll see the tax base.
hundred thousand minus fifty thousand. There is a mistake that I've done because fifty thousand is a capital allowance. So just give me a minute. Remember, it was revalued. So revaluation is always taken into account for the carrying amount. But revaluation is not taken into account for the tax base. So when you are calculating tax base, you calculate cost minus capital allowance. That is fifty thousand. But when you are taking the carrying amount, it is not hundred. It is from the ninety thousand. You have to deduct the depreciation of forty thousand. Okay, that was a mistake I did. So it is. So the carrying amount will be ninety thousand. You do not deduct depreciation also. The asset is revalued to ninety thousand. You just take the revalued amount, okay? So here it is ninety thousand. Good that I did this mistake because most of you will be doing this mistake, right? So now you know ninety thousand and fifty thousand. What is the difference? What is the difference? The difference is forty thousand. Tell me, is it a tax deferred tax a liability or a deferred tax asset? It will give rise to deferred. Tax liability. I would say D T L because tax base is less. So just apply 30% on this 40,000, which is 12,000. 12,000. So 12,000 is your deferred tax liability. Correct. Doing this much. You will only get a quarter of the mark. If this is a five or six marks question, you might get a one or two marks for the calculation. But the question asked explained, so you cannot stop here. You need to now explain in words, and this is what is difficult in SBA to explain in words. You, you might be able to calculate, you understood the concept, but explaining in word is very important. And how do you do that? How do you do? Tell me. You can start before the revaluation scene, okay? So prior to the revaluation, okay? One paragraph you can contribute to prior to revaluation, okay? I'm not writing the whole answer. It's not possible for me to write the whole answer. Trust me, because when I sit to write the whole answer, it will waste a lot of time. Rather, I would just tell you the main points. So prior to revaluation, what is the carrying amount? It would be. Just now we calculate 100 minus 40. So this 60,000 you can take 60,000. You can even show in bracket 100 minus 40. Okay. Then as it was revalued to 90,000. I'm just writing the figure. Revalued. But this things you have to write in sentence in full proper sentences. Okay. In words. Till after here onwards it's in words. But I'm just showing you in short forms. So the amount revalued to 90,000. Why did I do that? Remember the gain. We still have to take the gain into account. Okay, so there is a thirty thousand difference. Can you see from sixty to ninety? There's a thirty thousand difference. What about this thirty thousand? How do you deal with this? There's a thirty thousand of temporary difference. You have to use this word temporary difference and all when you're writing. Because of revaluation, this temporary difference came, right? Of thirty thousand. Now, where does revaluation gain goes? Which place? Remember all these things I am telling you. You have to write in words, okay? Revaluation gain. Only the important points I am writing so that you know. Revaluation gain goes to which place? OCI, other comprehensive income. It goes to other comprehensive income, and so the deferred tax also will go to OCI. I am just showing you. Deferred tax also will go to OCI. So this is what you have to write in that paragraph. Okay. What is that tax? Is it this twelve thousand? No. That twelve thousand is because of the carrying amount on the tax base. Now we are talking about this thirty thousand. So you have to apply thirty percent on this thirty thousand as well, which will be nine thousand. Okay. Nine thousand. Now, remember the journal entry. Don't forget the accounting entry. You have to give accounting entries. Where numbers are involved, you have to give accounting entries. Okay, so you debit where? You debit where? Okay. 
okay at least you know where you are going to credit deferred tax liability is a credit where how much 12000 that we have got earlier out of this 12000 9000 that you have just calculated goes to oci and the balance 3000 goes to pnl now do you understand why did we do that 30% on 30000 to find how much will go to oci and how much out of 20000 will go to pnl the balance goes to pnl now do you understand so you debit oci you debit pnl pnl is the balancing figure this is 9000 already we got this will be 3000 okay that's not it one more thing the last thing might not come into your mind okay but even if it even if it does not come at least you might lose one mark or you know half a mark but it's good that if you remember okay i will write that point that last point is balance on the revaluation reserve don't forget the revaluation reserve there's a revaluation reserve also how much will it be there in the revaluation reserve within other components of equity how much See how much is the gain? Already gain is thirty thousand there, no? Devaluation gain. Out of that thirty thousand tax, you have to deduct. How, how much? How much was the tax? Nine thousand. So what is the balance? Balance will be now twenty one thousand. This many of you might forget or not even think about it. If you don't, you will just you will you might lose one one mark. But if it if you include it, it's good because you are getting the full marks. Now we are going to the second specific situations. The second situation is share option scheme where you are giving share option schemes to employees. Okay, how do you account for this? Here you recognize an annual remuneration expense. Okay, because giving share option is what is a part of a remuneration and which is an expense for you. So in your PNL account, you record it as an expense. But what about the tax relief on that? Tax relief you are not getting until share options are not exercised. It is not at the time when you grant. It is at the time when you exercise the share option and it is often maybe in future, in three years, in two years, in four years. We don't know the time. Okay, so the amount of tax relief it is based on what based on the intrinsic value of the option okay they will give you all this thing in the exam what is intrinsic value and all everything will be given to you you just have to know what to take and what to leave on what to charge the tax on what not to charge the tax okay so the difference between the market price of the share and the exercise price is the intrinsic value on that you have to charge tax now this delayed tax relief means that equity settled share based payment there are two types of share based payment this definitely we are going to deal it under ifrs2 okay under ifrs2 we are going to go through two types of share based payment either you can give it in terms of equity or cash okay so here delayed tax relief means equity settled share based payment scheme gives rise to a deferred tax asset we are talking about equity okay gives rise to what deferred tax asset remember because carrying amount will be less than your tax base that's why then this is the pro forma that you need to calculate your deferred tax asset if it's an equity settled share based payment okay i've pasted it out for you so you start with the carrying amount of the share based payment deduct which is nil deduct your tax base and your tax base there's a strike mark go down and see what it means the tax base is the expected future tax relief that means it is based on the value of the intrinsic value of the option okay tax it and find the deferred tax asset then where the amount of the future tax deduction exists the accumulated remuneration expense that means your tax deduction is more than your remuneration what happens then the tax deduction relates partly to two things one is from remuneration expense you are deducting tax and the other part is from the equity understand not understanding don't worry we'll do a question therefore 
the deferred tax must be recognized partly in profit and loss and partly in equity why remuneration expense goes to profit and loss okay so deferred tax on that will go to profit and loss about equity deferred tax on equity will go to equity so from there we have to adjust same like the previous one how we did for the revaluation right partly it goes to other comprehensive income partly it goes to profit and loss here also is the same thing here also is the same thing now let's do a question before we go to a third situation so test your understanding five is for equity share based payment here an entity splash establish a share option scheme for its four directors please count the directors okay this scheme commenced on 1st of july 2008 each director will be entitled to 25,000 share options on condition that they remain with Splash for four years. Okay, fair value has been given, exercise price has been given, fair value of the shares at the last date has been given. That means when you're going to exercise, a tax deduction is only given for the share options when they are exercised. The allowable deduction will be based on the intrinsic value of the option, assume a tax rate is 30%. We know all that now. A tax deduction is only given. Okay, this is repeated. Calculate and explain the amount to be included in the financial statements of Splash for the year ended 30th June 2009. That means four years. For the four years, including explanation and calculation of any deferred tax implications. There are two requirements in one. First is calculate, second is explain. And many, many of you forget the explanation part and you just worry about calculation. Don't do that. In fact, most of your marks are in the explanation compared to calculation. If you have seen the marking scheme, go today and go and check any marking scheme. Explanations are always given higher marks than calculation because it's tough to explain. Okay. Now, how do you start this question? Approach this question. Calculation or explanation. See, whenever a question like this is comes calculate and explain always start with calculation you might think calculation will take so much of time no because when you calculate those figures only you have to explain you cannot explain without calculating not even from the, your knowledge of uh, is 12 you can't everything is based on that calculation so first calculate then explain always so now let's start calculating calculating what What do you calculate? You start calculating the expense, the remuneration expense. This is your first point that you have to calculate. Okay. And meanwhile, you can explain also. Okay, explanation part, I'm giving, leaving it to you. I will be explaining you, but the points you have to write in your own sentences. I'm not writing the answer here. Okay. So how do you do this? This is based on what? Fair value of the options at the grant date. Okay. Maybe through arrow, I can show you. Fair value of the options. at the grand date okay now this in your exam you don't start doing with arrows and all okay this is my way of explaining you have to write in proper full sentences that is this this is how remuneration expense is calculated okay and then this expense is spread over the vesting period it is spread over the four years the expense that you're going to calculate that means you need to divide it by four okay once you once we are going to do ifrs2 that is share based payment we haven't done ifrs2 yet okay but when we do that you will understand this better that time you can come back again and revisit this maybe to understand it better since we are doing this standard before ifrs2 you might have a little uh, difficulty but it's not so difficult also trust me okay ifrs2 is share based payment there what do you do same thing 
any expense you just divide it over the vesting period that means over the four years so now what is the expense you have to calculate the expense for the which year 30th june 2009 they didn't tell you all the four years when they just tell one year only for that year you have to calculate don't waste your time writing for 2007 uh, uh, 9. no it's not required only 2009 they want so at that time what will be the expense this is how you calculate it how many directors are there four directors how many shares already has given has been given to you 25,000 multiply by how many what is the fair value at the grant date it is 10 10 10 divide this by 4 because in 2009 it will be for the last year or you can simply just write the fraction 1 over 4 if you see your answer it will be into 1 over 4 or divide by 4 is the same thing so what would be the answer the answer is 250,000 this is the expense it would be a big amount trust me it would be a big amount okay now second paragraph write the tax okay for tax purpose okay i'm telling you the answer you have to write it for tax purpose the tax relief is calculated on what intrinsic value intrinsic value so tax relief on intrinsic value okay so what it be what is the intrinsic value first find the intrinsic value before finding the tax relief intrinsic value is what market value minus the date you are going to exercise what is the market value at that date fair value of the shares are 30 june 2009 is 17 Exercise price of option is 5. So, 17 minus 5 is the intrinsic value. All this is very easy. Okay. The standard is very easy. Very, very easy. I'm telling you. The older thing is to identify what falls under what category. What is intrinsic value? What is exercise price? What is market value? What is tax relay? What deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability? That is the difficult part. Otherwise, it's very easy. Okay. Because everything is fixed. It's 12. So, on this 12, okay, this is the intrinsic value. Now we are going to calculate that pro forma to calculate what deferred tax asset. So carrying amount, carrying value of share based payment is what nil. It will be nil always. Tax base only will change. What is the tax base? When you calculate the tax base, now you have to take the intrinsic value 12. So still, how many directors four directors how many shares Twenty five thousand shares how many what is the price now 12 intrinsic value divide this by four the only thing that is changed here is the intrinsic value this one this changed earlier when we were calculating uh, this one here it is 10 here it is 12 because this is based on intrinsic value that is the only thing that changed so that's why this figure will be different Three hundred thousand deduct that's why it's a deferred tax asset because 0 minus 300,000 is a negative 300,000 on this you take that 30 percent because that is the tax rate okay so deferred tax asset deferred tax asset I'm writing DTA short form 30 percent on 300,000 is 90,000 can you stop here can you stop here no then what what is left something is left here okay you have to see whether the amount of tax deduction exists the accumulated remuneration or not you have to see that does it does it of course it does of course it exists see here uh, i'm going to highlight it. here it is 250000 here it is 300000 tax deduction is more than the remuneration it exists so if it exists means remember partly to oci partly to pnl I mean equity. 
that is the meaning behind this if tax deduction is more than the remuneration itself part of it will go to equity part of it will go to pnl that is the meaning and that you have to write in words okay what is the difference between 300 and 250000 50000 50000 so this 50000 where will it go the difference is 50000 okay these are the entries okay debit deferred tax asset how much whatever you have calculated this amount only 90000 correct credit where equity first place second place where pnl equity will be how much 300 minus 250 the, the difference 50000 into 30% which is which is what 15000 and here pnl will be the remuneration expense remuneration expense is what 250000 see here you are taking the remuneration as it is only in the equity you are taking the balance okay tax deduction minus remuneration 50000 so here it is 30000 sorry 30 percent then it will be 75000 okay to be sure that your double entry is correct or not always add up the debit with the credit here credit is 15 and 75 so if you add 15 and 75 it adds up to 90000 on the debit side so it's correct okay So that's it. Now let us go to the third issue. Third is unused tax losses. Okay. So for unused tax losses, how do you calculate deferred tax? IS 12 says, okay and remember even in your exam sbr exam if you see out of all the situation this is one area which has been always tested now i don't know the reason why maybe the examiner is in love with this i can't tell but most of the time it has been tested whether as a discussion or whether as a calculation so you better be very uh you know thorough with this especially i'm not saying others are not important but this has been come and it might come so where an entity has used unused tax losses is 12 says a deferred tax asset must be recognized but but only to the extent that you can utilize that loss against future taxable profit if you can't if there is no future taxable profit you cannot utilize these losses anywhere in the future you cannot recognize deferred tax asset that's it okay so is 12 says that before you recognize deferred tax asset they are more strict in recognizing deferred tax asset than deferred tax liability remember this that's why we had that one additional condition right deferred tax asset should be recognized only after considering this following four things number one whether sufficient taxable temporary difference is there in the future or not against which you can utilize your tax losses second whether it is probable that entity will make taxable profit before the tax losses expire see sometimes you cannot carry forward your tax losses forever maybe for two years or three years you can carry forward so within that time period are you having any taxable profit if yes go ahead and recognize if no you can't recognize third third whether the cause of tax losses can be identified and whether it is likely to re uh, recur okay so that is recurring otherwise the existence of unused tax losses means what it's a strong evidence in itself that future taxable profit might not be available if you are continuously having five years losses okay unused tax losses that means what it's very very uh, likely that you are not going to have a taxable profit the last one whether tax planning opportunities are available or not what do you mean by tax planning opportunities this you will better understand if you are doing taxation advanced taxation you will understand this better there they have explained but here you don't have to know so much of tax here you only need to know tax planning means planning in such a way that you can minimize your tax you have to pay less tax for example if you're having a losses in a current year and if you're having a profit in the current year some other profit through which you can utilize or you can carry forward it okay you will make sure that you carry forward and reduce your you carry it forward 
so that you have to pay less tax in the future as well. Okay, if that is possible, okay, if, if you have some profit through your tax planning, if you can create some profit or there is some profit by which you can utilize these losses, then you can recognize deferred tax asset. So all these four conditions needs to be checked. Okay. Now in the exam, you don't have to see one by one whether this condition, this condition, this condition, this condition has been satisfied or not. No, 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 no. Out of this for any one. You have you will understand from the case study itself. Now let's do a question on this before we go to the fourth specific situation. So in this question, we are going to do a carry forward tax losses question. Okay. As a 31st December 2001 red has tax adjusted losses of 4 million. Okay, which arose from one of restructuring exercise under tax law. This losses may be carried forward to relieve taxable profit in the future. Red has produced forecast that predict total future taxable profit over the next three years to be 2.5 million. However, the accountant is not able to reliably forecast profit. The tax rate is 30 percent. Okay. However, the government passed legislation during the reporting period that lowered the tax rate to 28 percent from 1st of Jan 2002. This is a very good question. It's a very twisted question. There are two things this question requires you to do. One is regarding the tax losses that is understood. Second is also the tax rate choosing the correct tax rate 30 or 28 percent. This is how examiner is going to make you confuse. They are going to give you two or three inside one question. Explain the deferred tax implications of the above. It looks like only deferred tax, but you have to choose the correct rate also 28 or 30 percent. OK, so now how do you do this? You need to write on this actually more than the calculation. You have to write on this part. Okay, I'm not writing the answer, but I will tell you some points. First, you need to start with D T D T A. That is deferred tax asset. When it can be recognized and when it cannot be recognized. You have to start by this, the first paragraph. Okay. So this line okay the answer that is there you can read the answer later on you can memorize it if you want why because it is always copy pasted if you always see the answer for this question specific question the answer is always repeated what is it that deferred tax asset can be recognized if it is deemed probable that future taxable profit also will be available against which the unused losses can be utilized this first paragraph you can memorize it and keep second paragraph they are talking about the probability of future taxable profit TP against which you can utilize your losses then recognize DTA that is the first paragraph basically second understand the event whether it is a recurring event that tax losses has arised or a non recurring event understand the importance of the event that's why they told it arose from one of restructuring exercise what does it mean it is a non-recurring event. This tax losses arose from a non-recurring event. This is in the second paragraph. Okay, this are paragraph number. I'm telling you, you have to write it in your own words. I'm not writing the answer for you because the moment you learn writing on your own, you learn better. Trust me, you will make mistake. Initially, you will make mistake. You will struggle. You will go somewhere out of the path only. Some other answer. Don't worry. It happens to all. It has happened to me. It will always happen to you. There is no perfect answer. You will never reach to that perfection. Maybe you will become better and better and faster and faster, but never that perfection. Whatever the answer is given to you, you can never exactly write whatever is there in the answer. You will miss some of the other points. Don't worry. Your job is not to perfect. Remember, 50% is the pass rate. So you can still afford to make 50% of the mistake and pass this paper. I'm not encouraging you to make the mistake, but that's how it goes. Okay. Don't try to perfect an answer. Try to cap collect the maximum marks and that is done by understanding this little little points. So this is from wrong. What does it imply? You need to understand the implication. If it's a non recurring what does it imply? It implies they can. I'm using arrow, but you have to write in proper sentence. Okay, they can return to profitability. Possible. No. If it's not recurring, not every year, it's not a normal thing. That means suddenly tax loss happen next year. They can return to profitability. Chances are there, right? 
this is what you need to write even the forecast okay now this is a difficult part okay. this is a difficult part the third one what is it linking this to the case study is a tough part for candidates and this is where the difference comes between the passing candidate and the failing candidate they're not able to link with the case study then why that case study is given to you you can say you can give a evidence whether this is true or not forecast forecast predicted by them confirms this if you go through the forecast what does the forecast say over the next three years it is 2.5 million so even the forecast uh, confirms this you can talk about it in your answer third paragraph okay what is it the amount of deter amount of dta that you can recognize how much dta can you recognize if a tax asset profit is what 2.5 million that means deferred tax asset also 2.5 million only they can recognize because the profit is 2.5 million you have to write it so up to this extent you can recognize deferred tax asset out of the 4 million loss fourth paragraph what is fourth remember you told 2.5 million okay what about the cal what about the percentage 30 or 28 percent so now 30 at 28 percent comes 30 person or 28 person is in the fourth paragraph you see one by one you are solving one by one issue this is how you collect marks one mark one mark one mark maybe you might get one mark here one mark here one mark here this is how you are collecting marks so even if you miss one or two lines it's okay go forward go forward don't wait for that perfect answer until you become perfect by reading answers will never help you never it will help you because when you read answers you feel like oh, i have understood it's very easy to understand trust me when you read answers it's very easy automatically you will understand everything but the problem lies in when you come to answer the question how you are thinking how much time you are taking to think are you able to link this that needs to be tested when you're actually doing the question not by reading answer because it's not only the answer that we are focusing here also the way you apply it, your application skill how you are able to link how you are able to uh, structure your answer in an order matters a lot especially now that professional skill marks has come it didn't come for SBR, but other papers you know about P level. It has come so there it will affect. You need to follow an order of your answer. So 30 or 28 percent. You need to discuss this. Tell me from your idea what percentage should be. Tell me. In this condition earlier okay we can say 30 percent most of you will go by 30 percent i know this for sure this is an area where students go wrong sometimes what you have learned earlier when you get new information you have to unlearn what you have learned and learn new things you understanding when it is about deferred tax asset you have learned another thing it is not that okay the percentage which is there enacted during the reporting period okay understood First of all, let me tell you the correct answer. The correct answer is 28%, not 30%. Not what you have learned before. Because now it is about deferred tax asset. It is not a normal condition here. Here it's about loss. So when it is loss that is arising, remember. Why 28%? I will give you the explanation. You have to write it in your own words. When you are taking, you have to use that tax rate. Okay which is there which will be expected to be enforced when temporary difference reverses temporary differences this is the meaning of reverses okay whenever the temp not when temporary difference happen no when it reverses that time whatever the tax rate it is on that okay why it will reverse why temporary difference will reverse because you are carrying forward your loss okay and adjusting it again taxable profit so you are so you, whatever the tax you are paying that time it changes no now because loss you are adjusting in the taxable profit so because of that temporary difference changes reverses earlier you might be having temporary difference now because of the tax having unused tax losses it reverses you may not have it so that will happen later no 
this is what on 31st december 2001 this is the condition they are having loss but when it will reverse on from next year onwards because next year onwards only they are having profit for the first three years after that three years they are having profit so 2001 2002 2003 and this is from 2002 so from this year onwards temporary difference will reverse it's not in the current year that's why 28 percent you need a little bit of uh, you know what do i say you need to do multiple questions on this specific area to understand this better okay but it's not at all tough just understand it is in the future year tax rate that you have to use because in the future year only this temporary difference will reverse now calculate deferred tax asset finally fifth calculate is a deferred tax asset after using that 28 remember you have to use third and fourth this paragraphs you have to use so it is just simply 28 percent on 2.5 million okay how much 700,000 okay 700,000 where is the 700,000 goes write debit credit have this habit of writing debit credit or at least say it will go to this place or that place in SBR will help you so this is this will be credited to the tax expense okay in the statement of profit and loss deferred tax asset debit tax expense credit in the PNL again I will write DTA deferred tax asset it's an asset the word asset itself says it's a debit and tax expense credit in the statement of profit and loss understood now we are going on to the next situation the next situation is this and the following situations will be regarding business combination for example when a parent is acquiring some interest in a subsidiary associate or joint venture so this following situations are for that basically group accounting questions okay the ones which we did before tax losses revaluation then share option are for individual okay this and the following two will be for the business combination number one fair value adjustment so when a fair value adjustment happens okay identifiable assets and liabilities of acquired subsidiary are consolidated at what fair value we have not yet done the group accounting questions the ifrs 10 and ifrs 3 okay but we are going to go there definitely you will understand better that time and maybe you can come back and revisit this if you need okay but this is nothing very difficult okay it's like whenever you acquire a sub subsidiary okay how do you recognize how does the parent recognize it in the group accounting in the consolidated they recognize it at fair value whatever the asset and liabilities of that subsidiary it is recognized at fair value they are consolidated at fair value but from the tax base point of view okay this values in the subsidiary okay the values in the subsidiary they'll get the values from the subsidiary's individual financial statements they do not go by the consolidated this thing okay so in the cons in, uh, in the individual financial statements of the subsidiary it will be at cost not at fair value so you see there's a difference between the carry amount and the tax base that's why a temporary difference is created which gives rise to deferred tax okay now deferred tax recognized on this difference is treated as a part of net asset that you have that you have acquired remember when you're calculating any deferred tax on that fair value adjustment fair value adjustment means based on asset or liability either asset or liability anything adjustment can happen there if you are recognizing a deferred tax asset whether it's a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability needs to be included in your net asset that you have acquired okay and because of that your goodwill change right do you know the way how you calculate goodwill we have not done business combination ifrs3 or anything as such but you know from your financial reporting knowledge how do you calculate goodwill in a business combination fair value of your purchase consideration minus fair value of net asset right so that fair value of net asset gets impacted because of deferred tax asset or liability you see so deferred tax asset or liability if i including in the net asset net asset changes because of net asset changes goodwill also will change 
so it will have an impact on goodwill okay but you need to remember there is two types of goodwill one that goodwill which you have calculated based on when you have acquired the subsidiary that is okay second type of goodwill okay the goodwill itself goodwill alone will not give rise to deferred tax why because is 12f says it is ex specifically excludes it is it excludes it is 12 excludes it you you are not including any deferred tax asset or liability on goodwill itself but yeah anything can happen with the net asset anything and then you are getting a goodwill that is a different story now we are going to do a question on this family adjustments before we go to the next uh, issue under business combination test your understanding seven so here we are going to deal with what the issue that we have just covered right fair value adjustment so here on 30th june 2001 acquired 100 percent of shares of john for 300 thousand carrying amount of net asset is 250 included in this net asset is inventory which cost is 50000 but replacement cost is 55 and tax rate is 30% now deferred tax implications explain very easy question isn't it but how do you start this question calculate first what what do you need to calculate goodwill how do you calculate goodwill consideration what is the consideration you bought it for 300,000. Now, net asset. In the net asset, first we are going to write the carrying amount. What is the carrying amount? 250,000, isn't it? Write it in the inside column. Then we have fair value uplift. How much? How much? Inventory cost is 50,000. See, in your net asset, you have included the inventory as 50,000, but the replacement cost is 55,000. So you have to increase it by 5,000 more. That increase was not there. Now you write it. Then comes deferred tax liability on that uplift. You have to take 30% on that uplift only. On that 5000 which is 1500 it's a deferred tax liability you need to deduct it you see this is why impact is happening so now just add and the total will be which you need to deduct 253500 this needs to be deducted from consideration will give you 46500 which is your goodwill Correct? Calculation wise, this is perfect. What about explanation? So you have to talk about, you have to refer your knowledge. Your In your answer, you have to make sure that you write about IFRS 3. Because this is business combination. Whenever business combination comes, IFRS 3 comes. So according to IFRS 3, you have to talk about the differences that net assets are recognized at fair value. And the carrying amount will be at 55,000. Okay. So I will write this points for you so that it does not become very difficult for you. But you have to write in full sentences. I'm not writing in full sentences. I'm only giving you the points. The important points, I will write it down in bullet points. Okay. From there, you carry forward and write it. So IFRS 3 says, First point, what is it? Net assets at fair value. Okay. Then, carrying amount of the inventory, the group financial statements will be at what? Carrying amount. We are focused on the inventory part only, okay? Because that is, the, that is where the change is happening. Carrying amount of inventory. will be at 55,000 the replacement cost okay 
you need to write this in explanation and tax base. Tax base is based on that carrying amount, which is 50,000. Because we told that revaluation, any devaluation will not impact your tax base, only your carrying amount, your carrying value, right? That's why we increase the inventory by 5,000, but not in the tax base. Because tax base goes by the inventory based on the individual financial statement. The cost is 50,000, so 50,000. Therefore, there's a temporary difference. So you have to write all this in sentences. I'm writing in different bullet points, but you can write this all in one paragraph. Okay, I'm writing one. Temporary difference will be 5,000. What about the next paragraph? Deferred tax liability. Deferred tax DTL. Okay, so this must be recognized where you have to write like this must be recognized in you have to write the place very important write the correct word consolidated has to be written when is a group of question okay otherwise people will get confused whether it is individual financial statements or consolidated financial statements parents financial statements or subsidies financial statements you have to write consolidated financial statements okay I'm writing FS for financial statements how much just now we have calculated 1500 5000 and 30% on that you can show it in fact in bracket you can show it like this make it a habit to show it like this if you are typing it in word okay because you have to explain even if it's very obvious from your calculation that you are deducting you are adding something it can be seen that you have deducted you have to write it you have to write it because they don't explain okay so here you reduce it from reduce it from subsidies net assets subsidies net assets at accusation date you have to write it then you're going to reduce it which will increase increase goodwill you have to write this in words and then show the calculation goodwill arising on okay in fact if you see the answer first is explanation then is the calculation but actually they have already calculated first and kept it somewhere and then later while presenting answer they have first wrote the explanation then they have calculated so that way also you can do or first you can show the calculation and then you can start writing because the requirement is see in your ACCA exam when you see the answer why the answer is in that pattern because the answer start with explain if the answer started with calculate and explain you will always see calculation is first explanation is later if the requirement is explain and calculate it will be explanation first and then calculation so requirement the way the requirement are the wordings of the requirement the way it is ordered are taken very seriously even in the answer that's why explanation part is first calculation part is shown below if you see the answer okay so anyway you can do it that's up to you but this explanation needs to be there that's what i'm saying okay So that's it. Now we are going to the next issue. The next issue and this also arises in a business combination, not anywhere else. That is provision for unrealized profit. Here, it's like when a group sells to each other, parent selling to a subsidiary or subsidiary selling to parent anyway, okay? They are in one group only. So when a group company sells to another inventory, then there is some unrealized profit that is remaining within the group. What do we do in the consolidation? We eliminate. We eliminate. Okay. So in your consolidated financial statement, this is the adjustment. You debit cost of sales and you credit the inventory. That means in your statement of financial position, that means when you are writing inventory from there, you deduct the unrealized profit because that profit is not realized. And your debit cost of sales in PNL. Okay. But 
remember this provision for unrealized profit this adjustments will reduce your carrying amount of inventory okay same way from your carrying amount of inventory you reduce it while calculating the carrying amount but the tax base is at the cost only that will not have uh, this provision of unrealized profit will not have an impact on the tax base remember it will remain at the cost of the uh, stocks only in the individual financial statement whoever has purchased it so what you need to remember is this creates a deductible temporary difference or you can say deferred tax asset provision for unrealized profit will always create deferred tax asset now let's do a question on provision for unrealized profit test your understanding eight here mug has owned 80 percent of the ordinary share for glass during the current year they sold inventory to glass for 250 with a gross profit margin and one quarter of this inventory remain unsold by glass and tax rate is 20 percent always understand who sold to whom parent or subsidiary because the one who's selling is the one who's going to realize and going to have an impact of unrealized profit okay so here mug the parent sold to the uh, subsidiary with a gross profit margin okay as we always start with calculation so let us first calculate what do you need to calculate hmm? you need to calculate the inventory how do you get it see here they have given you the sales value okay sometimes indirectly you have to find out you have to know how to find this indirect techniques you have to know sale is 250,000 gross profit margin is 40 percent so first find the profit first find the gross profit margin you already have sales you get the gross profit margin and the difference you will get the inventory also okay this is why you need, need to think a little bit of out of the box sometimes they will not directly i told you they will never spoon feed you in sbr they will not give you everything directly you have to work hard for it but you will be given information through which you can find out indirectly you have to extract so invent so sales is uh, 250 what is the gross profit margin 40 percent so find the profit profit is 40 percent of 250,000 which is 100,000 100,000 is the profit so what would be the inventory how much it is it remaining remain unsold the unsold ones only we want because there only you're going to have unrealized profit so one quarter of this inventory remain unsold one quarter means 25 percent or one fourth of hundred thousand of the profit which is 25,000 25,000 so 25,000 is the inventory you understanding what do you do what do you do accounting entry I am more interested in accounting entry. Okay, first you debit where cost of sales, credit where inventory because you have to remove this from inventory. It's an unrealized profit. <clears throat> it's 25,000, 25,000, 25,000. Perfect. Now, now deferred tax asset, deferred tax asset, find deferred tax asset, DTA. What is DTA? On that 25,000, just apply 20%. What would what would be five thousand? Five thousand. So you debit DTA five thousand. And where do you credit the five thousand? Tax expense. DTA debit tax expense credit five thousand. All calculations are over. Now let's come back to our explanation. How do you start this question? You have to first identify, okay talking about mentioning that it's an intra group sale intra 
group you have to mention about it so because of this what happens and what happens and what happens all the steps comes that you eliminate on consolidation and all those things you have to write so okay so basically the inventory that is remain unsold must be removed from the consolidated statement you have to write it that is first second paragraph you have to write that is what we have done calculation profit on sale through which you have got the inventory that calculation what we have done you can write it in paragraph 2 okay basically you can say that this adjustment is to adjustment to eliminate unrealized profit what is that adjustment we have just done it i will go back and take you this adjustment here debit cost of sales credit inventory that is what you are eliminating from inventory you are eliminating it by crediting okay even from cost of sales third what is third calculation and explanation of dta when you talk about dta talk about two things carrying amount what is what is included and tax base always this is what you do in any question when you have to explain whether it is deferred tax liability or deferred tax asset you mentioned about carrying value tax base carrying value tax base carrying value tax base three times i have repeated so that you never forget this so what would be the carrying amount it would be at 25000 it would be nil okay but we know that it is 25000 lower than its tax base because we have eliminated inventory remember that elimination that unrealized profit will not have any impact on tax base but this will be negative 25000 because your inventory will reduce by 25000 so 25000 so it will be having a deferred tax asset right this will give rise to deferred tax asset that's what you have to talk that it will give rise to deductible temporary difference and hence deferred tax asset So next, so the adjustment required to account for deferred tax is this one. This is the adjustment for deferred tax asset. Okay. So you have to talk about that deferred tax asset will come, but also there's a reduction in the tax expense. That's why tax expense is credit. Tax expense also will go down. Understanding? In the consolidated statement of profit or loss so that's it now we are going to the third issue under consolidation the last issue is unremitted earnings remember the unrealized profit and unremitted earnings are two different things so a temporary differences arises when the carrying amount of investments whether in subsidiary associate or joint venture is different from the tax base we have separate standards for each of this okay associates and joint venture is 28 subsidiaries we have okay which we have not yet covered but we are going to cover them okay so any investment in any of this okay the carrying amount will be different from the tax base how the carrying amount okay in the consolidated financial statement is the investor's share of the net asset of the investee plus the purchase goodwill but when you're taking the tax base it is just the cost of investment you're seeing carrying amount and tax base are two different things so that difference the difference in the unremitted earnings or you can say undistributed profit of the subsidiary associate or joint venture now what does IS-12 says? IS-12 says the deferred tax should be recognized on this temporary difference, except when two things happen. There are exceptions where you cannot recognize deferred tax asset on unlimited earnings. What are those exceptions? Number one, investor is the one who controls the timing of the reversal of the temporary difference. That means your temporary difference changes. It reverses. But who changes? Who controls that timing? The investor. The one who have invested in that. Second, 
it is probable that profits will not be distributed in the foreseeable future okay in the foreseeable future profits will not be distributed so in these two conditions you do not recognize deferred tax then an investor can control the dividend policy of a subsidiary if this is the case you cannot recognize deferred tax but not always that of the other types of investment what do you mean by that this means deferred tax does not arise on investments in subsidiaries but it will arise on investment in associates and joint venture please understand this for subsidiary deferred tax will not arise but if you are having an investment in associates or joint venture deferred tax may may arise not must but may arise we never know now so that's it for unlimited earnings and regarding financial assets financial assets will come under your ifrs 9 financial instruments okay there we are going to go in detail what is financial assets but for now let me tell you what is financial asset briefly so that you understand financial assets are those assets through which you earn money it's like money item like your debtors because having debtors you are going to collect cash your cash if you are having any investments in any company through which you can earn those are known as financial assets they are financial finance you know financial assets there are some types of assets which are not financial like non current assets motor vehicle plant and machinery these are non financial assets you understanding so for non financial assets we are dealing we have so many standards intangible assets i38 non current asset i uh, i16 which will be the next uh, standard also for us after this lecture that will be the my next lecture i16 but financial assets all financial assets are under one category that is ifrs 9 which we are going to cover in detail later on don't worry but for now know that financial assets may give rise to deferred tax may but if they are if they are revalued because financial assets you know if you have known a little bit knowledge of ifrs 9 if you can recall from your financial reporting you know that when financial assets are revalued okay deferred tax may arise may arise sometimes so that's it for unlimited earnings we don't have a question for it but we'll you can go through a revision kit and find a question for that or maybe in the exam question has never come disclosure this is the last part of this lecture how do you disclose number 1 major component of its tax expense you have to disclose second tax that is recognized directly in equity disclose third any tax item that is relating sorry any tax relating to item that is recognized directly in equity disclose fourth any tax relating to each component of other components of income disclose fifth an explanation of the relationship between tax expense and accounting profit now fifth point i will explain you a little bit later first four points if you see it's always about equity equity other components of income disclose why why not pnl tell me come on if you're smart enough you'll be able to answer me you don't need any knowledge of anything just answer me this why because equity is the section where tax usually does not go there that is a place which readers even the users when they read the financial statements they often do not pay so much of attention to it because their whole attention is where in the profit and loss account in the profit and loss account so in the profit and loss account you are anyway showing you don't have to disclose it but for equity section you have to disclose it you understand we don't pay so much of attention there and rarely many items does not go also through equity very rare most of the time is through pnl and the last point an explanation of relationship between tax expense and accounting profit yes we have calculated the deferred tax it is on taxable profit but you are given accounting profit so you have to convert how you have converted that accounting profit to taxable profit you need to explain that relationship needs to be explained so that's it for this lecture we are over with this lecture but before i conclude or summarize everything that i have discussed in this lecture one final question needs to be done so let's do that one final question test your understanding nine h c r m okay i this question i got in my exam okay so this is my question i remember this was the fourth question in my exam when i gave sbr so i can exactly recall okay now read the requirement explain sorry discuss 
why this disclosure provides useful information to HCRM's investor. Discuss. The moment you say discuss, discuss always is for more marks, around 10, 12 marks. So you see 10, 12 marks for just for discussion and you are wondering SBR is all about calculation. So do not come with this mindset. SBR is fully calculation. Uh, even if it's theory that you have to write is very little, it's nothing like that. In terms of marks, if you have to ask me, I would say it's equally weighted 50-50, 50% calculation, 50% discussion. So you cannot just pass SBR with the help of your calculation alone. No, it's not possible. You need to know some of techniques to discuss, to write a discussion question. You need to, especially in professional level, all papers are like that. We'll have a discussion question. Okay. So let's go through this. Not nothing, not, not uh, much to read on this because most of them are numbers, but it's good. See, there are some case study where you can save your time in SBR because most of them will be numbers like this or financial statements which you don't have to read. Very rarely you will see it's a lengthy paragraph given so many information and all. Usually it does not come for SBR, but for other papers, yes. But anyway, let's read this. In the year ended 31st December 2001, year matters a lot. HCRM recorded a profit before tax of 300 million, tax rate was 20%. In accordance with IS-12, they have disclosed this PBT, profit before tax. 20% they have taken and 60. Adjustments to the current tax in respect of prior year, 8.2. Deputization on assets not qualifying for tax relief 1.5. Sundry disallowances 0.7. Total tax charge 66. Okay. And 22 is the effective tax rate. The question did not tell you to calculate anything. The question did not ask you to do deferred tax. The question asked you whether this disclosure, all this disclosed, whatever they have discussed, gives a useful information to HCRM's investors or not. This this type of question. This is an exam question, okay? This has been asked in my exam, I told you, in the fourth question. So this type of question will come as a 25 marks question and it will be asked uh, usually in the fourth question. Because in the fourth question, it's most, most about like conceptual framework, whether this gives a useful information, ratios, all those things are usually at the end, okay? And they are worth a huge mark, heavy marks are there, okay? You cannot just ignore it. So let's... Where do you start this? I have not copy pasted the answer for you because I think it's a waste of time. And since you have the answer with you, most of you have the soft copies with you, right? So answers will be there. You will be reading the answer anyway. So I don't think I have to give the answer here, but I can give you some main points from there. How to build up this answer, how to write your answer on your own. Try to write your own answer. I would always say, don't just read the answer and then try to write answer because then you know what's there. You know, you will write it also in such a way. So, please, okay. You need to write this answer in paragraphs, number one. How many paragraphs? What are the points you need to write? It's up to you. Some of you might write this answer in 10 paragraphs. Some of you might write in two paragraphs. Some of you might write in three to four paragraphs. It's up to you. But I would suggest don't write too extreme. Don't write too less. Be somewhere in the in-between range. Okay, because that is the safest area to be. If you are not sure how much to write, first of all, see the marks. Based on the marks, also, if you cannot decide, don't write too little, don't write too much. Okay, just stay in between. So, I would say uh, three to four paragraphs for this question is okay, fair enough. Okay, so how do you start? I will give you one minute. Think. So many things are there. Profit before tax is there. Depreciation is there. Tax is there. Uh, what, what not? So how do you start? Because you need a structure for an answer. If you are not able to visualize that structure of your answer before you write, you will not be able to write any discussion question. See, the technique behind writing a good discussion question is you always plan. If you are a good writer, I would say, if you know how to write, you know these techniques. But not everyone is a good writer or does not know these techniques. That's why I'm here to give you those guidelines or tips how to write. Okay. Some of you might not need this uh, discussion of mine. 
it's okay you can just skip my video and just finish see the summary and then go off it's fine but majority i know 90 to 95 percent of the people who are watching my video i know for sure you are lacking in this discussion question it's not in your calculation calculation anyone can teach you problem lies in the discussion and this even if i tell you the technique i cannot teach you just something i cannot transfer this to you it has to be there in you you have to write 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 a lot and practice your writing skills a lot trust me it will help you not only in sbr also in future for your other papers especially in SB papers like sbl and all it will it helps a lot okay for some of you it's natural you are god gifted you know you know the writing techniques how to write what is the middle part how to end you know it by looking at a question you know how to discuss but i assume not most of you are okay and that's why this issue comes that's why this pass and fail that's why so much of failures are there i'm not offending anyone i'm not saying it's bad or good but that's a reason one of the reason is that for one is time management the other one is uh, in the discussion question you lack even if you know the knowledge you only know about is 12 the knowledge what you have studied revaluation gain is like this you recognize that one is this deferred tax liabilities this is how you calculate that's not what you are supposed to write here now you see how the question comes in sbr you have learned something else in under is 12 all the rules here the question is different so i don't want to give you the shock at the end of the paper that's the reason i've included this here in the first from the beginning itself that even is 12 question they can ask in such a way okay so this is about usefulness of information less about is 12 how do you start okay think because i'm talking i'm not giving you time to think so i'll give you one minute think and then i will resume okay so you can start this question in any way trust me any way but if you see the answer the main priority they have given is to tax why because the question itself is is 12 it's is 12 no income tax so whatever it is if a standard is dealing specifically with one issue start with that point because that is the easiest to start with rather than going indirect go directly go to the tax go to the tax so number one is tax difference 20% and 22 22% you are going to first talk about this issue in the first paragraph okay so this gives you an idea that why the effective tax is differ from the statutory rate that is 20 percent okay see users what does what does users of financial statements need this information first start with the user's point of view why users need because they need to understand what is the future cash flow and future profit okay i'm writing it in short forms okay you can read the sentences later on users need information info about future cash flow and future profit isn't it what do we care in the financial statements we only care about two things one is profit one is cash flow so start with that future cash flow and future profits okay and this if you see this here tax rate reconciliation is very 
important for understanding what is the tax charge. So through this, you can understand what is the tax charge that is reported in the financial statements. Okay, that could be your first paragraph. Now we are going to the second paragraph. Now do you write five lines or 10 lines is up to you. Don't write 10 lines is not effective. I would say the best is five to six lines. Okay, because it is easy to understand, easy to see also. If you're writing too much in one paragraph, you're squeezing in. Okay, it does not look so good also. Try, you yourself try reading your answer. If you're writing everything in one paragraph, how it looks, looks very untidy, you know? I mean, you don't understand, you don't even feel like reading it. Rather than breaking uh, pieces, breaking it into different paragraphs, you feel like reading it. If it's four to five lines, anyone can, anyone will love it. Okay, second, now you are giving the differences, reasons for differences. between statutory rate and the effective rate. 20 and 22%. What do you think, what could be the reason? Number one reason, A, current tax adjustments. This is then the answer in proper sentences, but I'm giving you in bullet points so that you know what are the things you need to include in this answer? Okay, current tax adjustments. If you see here, adjustments to the current tax in respect of prior years. Here's what government has done. So because of this adjustments, you'll be underpaying or overpaying in the current year. Okay. If you are not paying in the previous year, this year you have to pay additional expense. If you have paid more that year, this year you have to pay less. That is the impact it will have. Okay, so from the point of investors, remember you are from the point of investors. What they need, what they need, what they need. This is what you have to answer all the time. So investors need to assess whether the effective tax rate is likely to be static or volatile. They have to see whether this is going to remain the same or it's going to change. Investors need to know that. So they must analyze comparative information to understand whether HM, uh, HCRM has history of under acquiring or over acquiring for current tax. Do they have a history of like this, where they always keep doing adjustments, under acquiring or over acquiring, paying less tax or more tax. You have to see all those things they need. Okay. Third paragraph. What is our paragraph? Impact. What could have an impact on that effective tax rate? One is C, one of. One of or unusual items. Okay. One of our unusual items can have a significant effect on the effective tax rate. Remember this. Okay, now we are going to start with what? Depreciation. We can start with depreciation. You have to use your table that is given to you. Always, whenever numbers are given to you, even if you're not calculating anything, you need to make use of that table. There's a reason why those numbers are given. So use it. Don't just leave it like that. Okay, so depreciation, talk about depreciation. What are you going to talk about depreciation? See, this depreciation does not qualify for tax relief. So year on year, it's going to repeat, isn't it? It's a recurring item. But what about other reconciling item like sundry disallowable, disallowables and all? They should be explained. Okay, other reconciling items should be explained to investors, remember. And even this sundry disallowances, Minimum you should be there of this. Too much of use is not good. Okay. So if you go by HCRM's reconciliation, the sundry category is very insignificant. It's just 0 0.7. Okay. Although giving more information might be more useful in this case. So, 
इन्वेस्टर शुड ऑल्सो रेफर से दे टोल डिस्कस वाई दिस डिस्कलोजर प्रोवाइज यूजफुल इन्फॉर्मेशन वट एवर द यूजफुल इन्फॉर्मेशन दे प्रोवाइड यू कैन राइट बट वट एवर अदर थिंग्स यू नीड टू एसेस दैट ऑल्सो यू कैन राइट इन यूर आंसर सो एट दी एंड यू कैन राइट दैट इन्वेस्टर्स शुड रेफर टू स्टेटमेंट ऑफ कैश फ्लो why because which will specify the tax paid in the current period if you want to know the tax paid in the current period go to your statement of cash flow so investors can assess that so that you can give as a conclusion it's like a recommendation you are giving okay so please make sure that you go through the answer once again and i'm going to summarize this lecture now let's summarize this lecture so we started with basic principles of talked about temporary differences then we went through the examples of temporary differences don't forget those examples you have to know it because this will help you in the exam okay because there are no other differences which they will give you other than that list those examples so need to follow calculations how do you calculate then differ tax liability or asset whether it's a liability or asset how do we recognize how do we measure we went through that then tax income and expense tax means it includes both your income tax your current tax and deferred tax together it is known as tax or income tax anything okay so current tax and deferred tax two things are there both you have to take together and both are recognized as non current liability remember in your statement of financial position then we went through specific situations like revaluation business combination unremitted earnings losses and also under business combination itself we went through three more adjustments what are they fair value adjustment okay then we went through share based payment that is not under business combination okay provision for unrealized profit okay then i think those are the things yeah so that's it and how do you disclose at the end So that's it for this lecture. Thank you for watching, and we shall see you in the next lecture, which is going to be IS 16, your property, plant, and equipment. By the way, if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please do subscribe to my channel and help it to reach 5k subscribers soon. It's almost near that, right? So please do support me by subscribing to my channel and share this channel link with your friends too. As you know, exams are coming up, 